I just want to welcome everyone here today and I appreciate everyone coming out and the media coming out and covering this and, and everyone that showed up. This is really, uh, we, we have a lot of really good news that comes out of, out of Broken Arrow. Uh, uh, out of this tragedy, we're, we're trying to make good news out of it really because uh, we're trying to do something right here. Uh, and this really, uh, this was a tough event. I, I couldn't imagine what the first responders went through uh, to be here and, and witness what they witnessed that day. It, it's just, uh, uh, there, there's no way that anyone can know what they, what they uh, had to deal with. And it was really one of the most uh, horrendous events that we've ever had in Broken Arrow. Uh, and uh, uh, to the work of Councilman Lester, it's, we're gonna make something good out of this. So uh, I really do appreciate everyone being here today. And there's so many people here, I'd like to recognize a few people. Uh, I see uh, Chief David Boggs and Chief Jeremy Moore from the fire department. Uh, a lot of officers and, and firefighters here. Uh, we have, uh, of course, Michael Spurgeon, our city manager, is going to speak. Uh, uh, Russell Gales here, our assistant city manager, and Scott Esmond, who's worked on the park uh, layout and what we're going to do with this park. Uh, uh, Wes Smithwick from the chamber. Uh, we just have a, a so and uh, councilors here. We have uh, Councilor Scott Udy, uh, Vice Mayor Richard Carter here. So happy that everyone's came out today because this is really a, an important event to, to our community. Uh, and the work that Mike Lester's done on this uh, has really been, uh, uh, it's, just, it's hard to uh, say all the time that he's put into this and, and the effort, and it's been something he's worked with. Uh, he's going to talk about how he accomplished it, but uh, I just can't really say enough for what uh, Council Lester's done. So I'm going to turn it over to him now. Mike? Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I appreciate those kind comments. I, I probably am the least uh, person that needs credit for this. But before I start, let me uh, clarify a few things. When this came out yesterday, uh, social media as it is, uh, people started making comments and I wanted to clarify a couple of things. First of all, this house does not belong to the Bever family. It was passed from their family sometime last year. We don't know when. We don't know under what circumstances, but it went from the family to the lender. The, the city of Broken Arrow is not purchasing this house. The foundation that was established will purchase this house. Uh, when that purchase is completed, they will donate this property to the city of Broken Arrow, which will then pass it over to our parks department. Uh, any funds that are derived from the sale of this house will then pass to the lender. And I need to emphasize that under circumstances such as this, because of the trauma that happened in this house, the value of this house was depreciated significantly. So any funds that are uh, derived from the sale would probably be insufficient to even pay the outstanding mortgage balance. So there were some comments about what happens to any additional funds. I've been in real estate for nearly 40 years and I can tell you in circumstances like this, and I don't know what the mortgage balance is, but I can, assure you that there would be no excess funds from the sale of this property. I've also talked to, uh, through a third party, the caretakers of the surviving siblings. I've passed to them the information about the foundation, what we're doing, the, the information about the park. They are in full agreement with what we are doing. However, and I stress to the media and I would appreciate this, they do not want any involvement in what we are doing. The reason is that they do not want those siblings to have to relive through contact of the media about what happened here uh, that night. So I would respectfully ask that nobody try to contact them if you know how to do that because the trauma that those siblings uh, endured will take many years to recover from and any contact about this project I think would be inappropriate. So how did we get here today? I was contacted I think last summer by uh, Matt Jacobson who will speak later. Uh, as the city councilor for this ward, the neighbors wanted to meet about several problems that uh, they were encountering with this property. Number one, there were kids that were creating vandalism on this house. There was constant traffic, uh, people coming up wanting to see if they could see anything that uh, occurred in this property, and just the constant reminder of what happened in this house and their relationship with the people that live there. 
So we began to, to discuss what the city could do. And uh, in talking with the city manager, uh, we decided that if the property could be acquired by a third party and donated to the city, the city would create a park. Well, that would, uh, taking the house down would certainly help the neighborhood in uh, making that bad incident go away. But there was more than that. It was the trauma for the neighbors, but in my uh, background, I was a Tulsa police officer, and though I never experienced anything as horrendous as what happened here, I certainly can understand the trauma that they experienced on this crime scene. And I think people fail to recognize the trauma that those first responders experienced, and that's something that they will carry with them for the rest of their lives. So what could we do as a city in helping the neighborhood, in helping the first responders heal, in helping this community heal and uh, as best as possible move away from the tragedy and the evil that happened here and make something that good come of it. And so I w put, was put in contact uh, with Phil Lakin with the Tulsa Community Foundation and I am pleased to announce today that the Bever Family First Responders Memorial Garden Foundation Fund has been set up through the Tulsa Community Foundation. Donations to purchase this property can be made through the foundation at tulsacf.org, tulsacf.org, or checks can be sent to the Tulsa Community Foundation, made out to the Bever family, first responders, sent to 7060 South Yale, Suite 600, Tulsa 74136. Now, it's our hope that uh, when we raise enough money, and, and I, the first question somebody's going to ask me is, how much money do you need? Well, I can't answer that because it's going to depend on the timing of the funds that are raised. We have spoken to the lender, and they have agreed to hold the property uh, until we start raising money. There is a time frame that we have, which is April the 7th, before they put this property back on the market. If it if we don't raise a certain amount of money by that time that it goes on the open market, we will then have to probably have more money in order to buy this house. Our purpose, the city's purpose, for the first responders, for the neighborhood, is to make this property go away. It's doubtful that anybody would buy it, but we want to make sure that nobody does. The park that we have designed, the park department has designed, is a place that brings uh, healing and tranquility. So. We hope that eventually the first responders that came to this property and even maybe years from now the siblings that survived could come by here in remembrance of the family members lost and provide some healing for them. I just want you to know that in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, we will not let evil overcome good. And I, I just wanted to finish with a, a, a quote that I found that says, good will always prevail over evil, no matter how much evil attempts to break you. More than that, you are never truly in darkness. Sometimes, sometimes all you need to do is turn on the light. Today in Broken Arrow, we're turning on the light. I want to introduce now Steve Garrett, uh, Sergeant Steve Garrett with the Fraternal Order of Police, who will speak uh, in reference to the first responders in the police department. Thank you guys for coming. My name is Sergeant Stephen Garrett. I'm the uh, Midnight Shift Patrol Supervisor, one of them, and I'm also the President of the Broken Arrow Fraternal Order of Police, Lodge 170. I'd like to thank uh, Mayor Thurman and Councilman Lester uh, for taking the steps to remember the victims of this terrible tragedy. i also like to thank City Manager Michael Spurgeon and the City Administrators uh, for acknowledging the first responders uh, that had the unfortunate task of responding to the call that night, uh, processing the crime scene, and investigating the aftermath of such a terrible incident. As one of the officers that was there that night, I can personally attest that the images in the minds of those first responders that came here that night never go away. Uh, the officers that responded that night worked diligently in the face of tragedy 
with bravery, courage, and professionalism. I'm extremely proud of every one of them, and they did a tremendous job. That includes the police officers and firefighters. Uh, we were able to save two lives that night, and we were also able to bring those responsible for the crimes uh, to justice before the sunrise the following morning. The organization came together and we ensured that the uh, victims received justice and that there was support for the officers and the other first responders uh, that were involved. On behalf of the Broken Arrow Fraternal Order of Police, we would like to extend our support for the initiative uh, to build the Memorial Park for the Bever family. We're very thankful uh, for an opportunity to be an integral part of that process. And we believe this Memorial Park would be an appropriate step to continue the healing process for not only the victims, but also the community and the first responders, uh, and that we ensure that we never forget the, uh, the sacrifice and the tragedy that occurred here that night. So with those thoughts, I'll turn it over to, I believe it's Justin Sharp of the Fire Department. And my name is Justin Sharp. I'm a firefighter with the Broken Arrow Fire Department, and I'm here representing Broken Arrow Firefighters Local 2551. Uh, first off, we'd like to thank Mr. Mayor and Mr. Spurgeon, Councillor Lester, and really any, all the city officials, everybody that has a hand in this project. I mean, this is a real positive thing, and we're, we're really glad that you, know, you guys are willing to step up and try to, try to take something so negative and turn it into a positive. You know, first of all, as a, as a firefighter in general, we don't really like to bring up the bad calls. We don't like to relive bad events. It's just not in our nature. Uh, we kind of do what we have to do and move on. That's kind of what we do. But when you have a house like this standing here, it's a constant reminder um, of what happened that night, of what went, you know, what went on, both for the police officers and the firefighters. Um, you know, personally, I've seen how it has affected a lot of the guys that were on scene here and what they had to deal with. Um, fortunately, I guess for me, my truck got stopped short and we got turned back but two of the guys that were on my crew didn't. And they were here, and they were an integral part of this all night that night. And um, I've seen firsthand how it's affected them, how it still affects them today. Um, you know, removal of this house will help, will help tremendously in that. You know, one thing that, that, if there is a silver lining, you know, as firefighters, our job is to save lives. That's our top priority. It's what we're here to do. And, and uh, the guys that were on scene that night saved one. And, it, and that makes a difference. It matters for us. It helps the guys that were here deal with what they had to deal with because you know, there's one person alive today that might not have been without their efforts. But um, being able to take down such an eyesore, something that's a constant reminder every time you drive down the street, replace it with something good, the Memorial Park, I think that'll help to bring some closure, not only to the, to the firefighters over here, but the police officers over here, uh, the neighbors that live around this area. They have to see it every day, the, the community as a whole overall. So uh, Local 2551 is in full support of this project. Mr. Mayor, we're willing and able to help in any way, any way necessary. Just let us know. And uh, we're really glad that, that this is being done. And with that, uh, one of the neighbors around here would like to speak, Matt Jacobson. <clears throat> Thanks, Justin. Yeah, no problem. Appreciate it. Mayor Thurman, Councilman Lester. City Manager Michael Spurgeon, thank you. All the city officials and the community partners that have assisted in this healing process, thank you so much. Um, my name is Matt Jacobson and Broken Arrow has been my hometown. And my line of work has taken me all across the United States, all across the world. And I knew this was the community, the city that I wanted to come back and raise my children in. When we were faced with that tragic night, um, it, it was amazing to see everybody who was involved come together and start taking action. In the wake of the tragedy, my wife and I were kind of left with, well, do we just let this process move on? You know, do we just sit stagnant and let the process roll? And in our hearts, we just didn't feel that. And once I connected with Councilman Lester, um, I, I got to see the beautiful power of community and the channels move properly. Um, many hands make light work and that's been true in this case. This house has been, um, in more ways than anybody other than the neighbors will know, just, yes, a constant reminder. I'm almost positive that in the future it would be a constant reminder for the, those surviving victims. Um, we're proud to say, because we maintain a beautiful relationship with the extended family, we have their blessing on this. It is the right thing to do. Um, it's time to turn the light on. Thank you so much for all your efforts. 
I'd like to call on the community to help us by going to TulsaCF.org and donating to see this beautiful park come out of such horrific tragedy. I'd like to now turn it over to City Manager Michael Spurgeon for final thoughts. Thank you. Thank you, man. Good morning, everyone. Um, after I finish speaking, everyone will be around to talk to, to the press um, if you so choose to. Without question, this is a, a, a very sobering and somber moment in our community's history. However, it is also a moment of hope, healing, and renewal. And I want to start by acknowledging the efforts of all the first responders for the city of Broken Arrow. Uh, I was announced as the new city manager, and the next day this tragic in incident happened. And I was on the phone with the chief of police uh, throughout the entire month asking how all of our officers and firefighters were doing because I know that it was going to be tough on them. And from a tragedy like this, what do you do as a community? And for Councilman Lester to take the proverbial bull by the horns and try to work with the city council members to, to remove this structure and to create such an awesome opportunity to, to extend our, our parks and to begin that he or continue that healing uh, there's nothing better that your community can do. And so with that, I'd just like to thank Councilman Lester for his leadership and also to all the council members who have backed him and to back the administration that says that we will appropriate the funds in our capital improvement program to make this happen once the property comes into the possession of the city. I'd also like to thank uh, Scott Esmond, our Parks Director. Uh, Scott appropriated some funds to have an architect put this rendering together for us, and he has been a partner from the very beginning to say, we will make this happen, our parks will take care of it. So with that, I would like to thank everybody for coming out today, and thank you for the support that you give all of our first responders, not just today, but every day, for the great job that they do for the city. And with that, that's, that'll conclude the press conference, and we'll be around to answer any questions.